Hey guys, in this video we are going to be building this website. It is a professional portfolio for web designers and web developers interested in freelancing. But here's the key, it is an effective website to get you more clients. I'm going to walk through step by step starting from scratch in this multi-part series and I hope this will help you on your freelancing journey. So let's get started. A quick thanks to EditorX for partnering with me on the Freelancer X community. This community would not be possible without their backing. And for those who don't know about EditorX, it is my favorite web building platform. You can create amazing, intuitive, modern, highly effective websites with drag and drop and amazing other features. Check it out at editorx.com. Before we get into the actual build of the website, I want to start off with what do we want inside a portfolio website? We need to know clearly what our objectives are. Starting with how you can help a business, we need to put your services, what you have done, client projects, it's always better to show what you've done, not talk about what you can do. Next is testimonials, we need to have credibility, and finally, we need a clear contact method. Now, let's talk about what we do not want inside a portfolio website. We do not want the percentage bars. <laughs> Please don't add this. For example, 83% design, 88% JavaScript, 92% HTML, and so on and so on. The reality is, would you list communication skills or team player or whatever you know, in, in a percentage, no, do not do this. <laughs> Just list your skills. The other thing is not understanding what you do. If a client lands on your website and they are confused about what you do, we've missed the point here. Also, if it's difficult for the client to contact you and finally a bad design. So let's keep all of this in mind in how we are building this website. All right, let's jump into EditorX. I'm starting with a blank canvas and I just reduced my desktop view to around 1320 just to make it easier to record. And what we will start with, what I always like starting with when it comes to websites is the menu and the footer <laughs> because everything else just fits in the middle there. So that's exactly what we're going to do to start. Going to go from left to right and again let me just stress the point is trying to keep it simple i'm not going to do anything fancy here i just want it to be easily replicable so that you guys can make effective portfolio websites so let's get into it start with the logo and currently you can use an image here but i want to actually keep this pretty simple so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use a vector art and let's look for something like maybe like an icon, an arrow maybe, or a rocket. I like those sort of illustrations. So I'm just going to look for something here and choose something. Okay, I chose an arrow. I think it looks pretty cool and simple. So what I want to do is I want to reduce the size of this slightly. And then let's make sure that it's aligned properly. And then we can, yeah, let's go with this for now. Now the next step, let's add some text to it. Let's go for, I'm just going to go for my name for now. I know that a lot of people overcomplicate this process. So I just want to keep it simple so that you can get started and refine and improve as you go. So let's just put this here. Okay, let's work with that for now. Next, let's start with the menu items. And I'm not a fan of having home. I think it's commonly known these days to click on the logo as the home page. So we want to make this valuable real estate. So what I'm going to do is add a few pages. And to do that, I go here.
Okay, now that we are done with adding the pages, let's work on adding that to our actual menu. So to do that, we go here, manage menu, then we want to add site pages. We just look for the specific pages. Let's go through all of those. Let's untick home. I don't want that in the menu, as I mentioned. Boom. I like it. Cool. Let's move this up a little bit more because next to this in the nav bar, I want a call to action. For those who are not familiar with what a call to action is, it's basically a button which drives a desired action. So in this case, I want someone to schedule a call. To do that, I'm going to add an element, I'm going to look for the button, and then let's use this one. Okay, I'm going to put that here and I'm going to change the text to say schedule a call. Okay, don't worry about linking it for now. Then I'm going to actually make this wider, move this a bit. Let's do that, move this a bit more. Okay, then the other thing is I'm going to change the color of this black. To do that, I just highlight the actual element. I go here, yeah. background. Let's use this blue color. I'm quite a fan of it. Let's change the hover. Let's do that to maybe a, a darker blue for now. Cool. Let's close this up and I'm liking how it is turning out. Pretty simple, we've got our logo, and we've got services, pricing, blog, contact, a nice call to action. Great. Let's move on to the footer. Currently, the footer is what's referred to as a master design. I want to change this master design. Not really a fan of the simplistic sort of look, even though we are going to go for a simple look but it's going to be a bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a section here. Let's make it blank. And then let's look for our footer. What I like about EditorX is there's existing components that we can use to save time. So we go to compositions and then footer should be here. There we go. Footer. And now here are some pretty cool designs that we can choose from. Uh, let's take a look. Let's go for this top one. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this footer section. And then I'm going to make this now our new footer, the master. So let's set this as the master. So what this simply means is it will be the footer on all of the pages that we are going to create. Okay. But what I want to do is I actually want to customize this a bit. And I want to change the background to make it black. Let's do that. Okay, obviously all the social icons are gone now and the text. So let's just start with the text. I'm going to edit this and make it white. While we on it, let's just change it quickly. And we can delete this. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this social section. And I'm going to add my own. To do that, we go to the add element section. We go embed and social. We go to social bar. And here are a few options that we can choose from. I'm just going to go for this one for now. Now it comes to the social links. So let's just change this up. We go set social links. And all I want is Twitter. I want, let's remove this and let's just maybe only use Instagram. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to actually change the icons. To do that, we are going to add icons. Let's look for Twitter. Okay, let's use this white icon. 
add to gallery. Great. Let's delete this, delete this one as well. And let's go for the Instagram. Okay, great. Let's just add it. Cool. Now let's just maybe add some better padding and some spacing. I'm just dragging it around. I think it looks pretty cool. I like the simplistic look. Now we are done with the first phase. That is the navbar menu section. Done with the footer. Pretty clean. Now we need to fill in the rest. And this is the exciting part. So let's start from the top. What I want to do is I want to start with this section and I'm going to apply a grid. Let's do two by one. Now I've got this left section and this right section. I'm going to add some text here. Let's start with a title. Let's put this here. I'm not going to worry too much about the actual alignment issues and everything. I just want to get the elements on the page and then we can work on improving the layout from there. So I want to I want to say professional web design and marketing for startups. Let's maybe make this an H1. Let's reduce the size. Okay, let's start with this. Let's make this a bit wider. Then let's do the line height. Let's reduce this a bit. I don't want auto spacing. Let's maybe make this like one. Let's see how it goes. Now let's reduce this a little bit more. Okay, cool. I'm happy with the text. Let's just put this here for now. Then I want some supporting text. Let's add a paragraph underneath this, reduce it. And then th what I'm going to say here is the value proposition. Focus on running your business while I focus on growing it. Now what we need is another element. So let's add the button. Let's change the text to contact me and this call to action we can always change we can always change it up to say hire me call me get a quote get a free website analysis whatever it is we can always change it let's just change this color again to this cool blue color there we go change the hover Great. Cool. I like how this is turning out. Let's make this a little bit higher. Then what we are going to do is we're actually going to stack all of these elements together. In other words, we're going to group it. Great. So that if I move this, they all move together. I'm lacking overall the look and feel, but we can always change that in the end. Now what I want to do is I want to personalize it. I want to add an image on the right hand side. To do this, we go to the Add Elements, go to the Quick Add, let's just add an image here, just drag it to where we want it. I'm just going to close this panel and then let's put this here for now. Now let's change the image. And all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to look for someone as an example. I'm not going to use myself, but I would suggest that you use yourself in this case. I'm going to look for an image and then just add it. Okay, I found an image. Let's use this person as our example. So what I want to do is I just want to change this up a bit. What I'm going to do, let's cl double click, drag it up a little bit. And then we are good. And then let's also crop it slightly. Cool. 
cool. Okay, I'm happy with that for now. Just move this here. And then let's try something and add an opacity to this image as well. So to do that, let's go background. Let's also choose our blue color. And then let's go image opacity and reduce that. I think it's, yeah, I think this looks much better than just the normal image. Let's just go with this for now. And yeah, I think it's coming together. I like what I see. We can always work on some optimizing things and work on mobile and everything. But in terms of landing, remember the whole point of a portfolio is it should be simple, should be clear to understand. You can clearly see that this is someone who offers professional web design and marketing for startups. Focus on your business while I focus on growing it. It's trustworthy, it's credible. Boom, I like it. Let's move on. Just one small touch up. I would like to add is maybe a background. So I'm not gonna go too fancy with patterns and everything. All I wanna do is something very simple. And let's use something maybe like a gradient. And then let's reduce the opacity. And then let's also shift the actual to 270. Yeah, something simple, straightforward, not over complicating it, but I think that looks much better than just a plain white background. Cool. Let us move on to the next step and let us start with the services section. I'm just gonna start with a blank section for now. All right, let's add some elements to this section now. Let's start with a title and I'm just going to say, a website should be a solution, not a problem. Let's start that here at the top. Let's also make sure that our line height is reduced to one. Great. Let's also increase the size of this. And also center it. Cool. Let's just double check here in our panels. Great. Now let's also add another title, smaller one. Let's go services. Bring that up just above it. We can reduce this. And also make sure that we center it. Let's reduce the size. Okay, let's go with that. Double check again to make it centered. Great. Let's also group these elements together, so stack them. Okay, great. Now I move them, let's just center it again. Let's move it a little bit up. Cool, now we've got our heading. Let's add some service boxes here. To do that, I'm going to add what's called a repeater, which is basically a fancy way of saying that if I create something in this card or section, it's going to automatically duplicate the styling to the next one and the next one, which I think is pretty cool. So let me just make this a little bit bigger I'm also going to change the background color so that it doesn't confuse you. There we go. Now we've got these three cards and I'm going to add some elements within these cards now. So let's start with an icon. I'm just going to use a shape here. Let's just add the shape in for now. We can work on changing the shape. I just want to have the layout here. 
Okay, let's add a heading, title rather, reduce it, let's make it a bit smaller. Then let's add some text. Let's make this text smaller. Okay, great. Let's move that up. Let's center it. Okay. Now let's work on actually putting some text in here. The first one I'm going to say your problem. Next one is how I solve it. Next one is outcome. Let's add some text in here. All right, it's coming together. Let's just add some more padding between these elements. Let's go with 10 on the left and then 10 on the right. Great. Okay. Now let's actually change these icons or these vectors rather. So I'm just going to look for something simple which illustrates what we just mentioned in the content. Awesome. I like how it's coming out. Nice and simple. Just move this actually a little bit more down. And just once again, make sure that it's centered. Okay, great. Okay, that's coming together. We've got our navbar footer. We've got our heading section. We've got our services section. What else do we need? We need to showcase what we've done and not talk about what we can do. To do that, we need to show our projects. So let's add a new section. Okay, let's Okay, let's call this client projects. Let's make it a bit smaller. Move it to the top for now. Let's also add some more text, another heading. For this one, we can say, I'm obsessed about getting my clients results. So let's make this one a bit bigger. Let's reduce the line height. to one and let's reduce the size of this client projects. Okay. Let's go with this for now and then let's just make it in a container, we can place it in a container. So that way, if we move it, it's almost grouped and stacked together. So let's reduce the size of this section to make it 200 px. Let's make sure that this takes the whole size of that section. Great. Let's add another section where we're actually going to place the websites itself. Let's apply a grid and let's go two by two apply. Okay. So what I want to do is I actually want to make the image on the left hand side slightly to the left and then the actual content on the right hand side. So let's do that and start with each element. Let's just add an image. Let's reduce that for now. Let's just get it in place and then we can work on the actual information. Just going to duplicate this quickly and I'm going to place it 
below. Great. Let's add the text. Let's add more text. Okay, and then let's add a call to action like a button. Change the text to, let's say, visit website. And now let's group these elements together, stack them. Great. Now what I want to do is I actually want to duplicate this. and Put this underneath. Great. So let's actually fill in this information here. Let's say we've got a client named XYZ Gaming Technologies. Great. Let's say the next client is, because I'm building a SaaS at the moment, let's go Bob's SaaS Company. Now, very important, you need to explain what you've done here. So it could be a case study or maybe a one sentence on what you've done for their business. So here's an example. I redesigned XYZ Gaming Technologies website which resulted in a 37% increase in premium member signups. Remember, you want to focus on the outcome here. Same goes for Bob's SaaS company. I helped Bob's SaaS company generate more customers through an effective website and internet marketing strategy, focusing on the outcome. You don't say I built it with XYZ, you know, platform. Okay, great. I'm liking how it's coming out. Let's just change the images. Okay, now that we've got the images, let's just move them up a bit to make sure that it looks good. Same thing with this one. This one looks pretty cool as is. Cool, let's go with that. Alrighty, a quick recap. We're done with the navbar footer. We've got a cool header. We've got a cool services. Now we need some social proof. What do I mean by social proof? I mean client testimonials. So let's add that in. Let's go with a blank. And I like the existing components here that Editor X has. It is under compositions. Then we go under testimonials. And let's use this one. And in this case, I think it looks awesome. I'm liking the testimonial look and feel. The only thing I want to change is the actual height. I think it's a bit too long. So to do that, we actually have to go Yeah, the height. Let's say 600. Okay. Then let's move everything up. Place it in a container. Let's move it up. Okay, great. Cool, it's coming together. Finally, we need one more important thing and that is the contact section. Now, yes, we could just have a simple link linking to our contact page, but I like the contact form. I think it's much easier to get hold of someone and it makes it clean and simple. So let's do that right now. To do that, we've got our section. Let's go here. Contact and forms. Then we can just look for a cool contact form that we think does the job. So I'm gonna go for something like this. Just wait for it to load. Great. Now that it's here, I'm going to move it up a little bit to the right. I'm actually going to change this and put it into a grid. Let's make it a two by one. Let's move this up a bit. 
And then I'm just going to add some text in this section. And let's say Great. Let's make this a bit bigger. And then reduce the line height. Just make sure that we align this properly. Great. Now we need to actually configure the actual contact form. To do that is pretty simple. Just click on the actual form itself. We go to form settings. Then we go to settings. Email notifications. And from here, every time someone submits the form, it will get sent to your email. You can just replace your email, of course, but it's set up to my Editor X account. Then we can also change the submit message, which is what I'm going to do and say, and then say, thanks for your message. We'll get back to you within 24 working hours. And it's really that simple. So let's do a quick recap on what we've done so far. We've got our value proposition here, services, what we do, who we've done it for, they are happy for credibility, and our call to action. Very simple. Again, this is not a detailed and very advanced with animations and everything. I just want to keep it simple and go back to basics. I think there are way too many freelancers who overlook this. And I hope that this design of a portfolio website will help you in the future. Now, in the next parts of the series on the portfolio websites, I want to actually delve into creating different services pages. I want to create a pricing page. I want to create a blog and I want to just make everything work together, especially working on tablet and mobile devices. We've not optimized for that, but I want to make this short and sweet, cover the 80-20 for now in terms of the layout. You can do this, follow this guideline. It works. It's a winning formula, winning blueprint. And I hope to see you inside the Freelancer X community where I'll personally review your website and give you even more help and feedback and guidance. So that's it for now and I hope to see you guys in part two.